Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's September 14th. These are your headlines. Uh, first up, I think the thing that's weighing heavily or the most heavily on the minds of anglers this week is Hurricane Lee and what kind of effects that the hurricane will have on the fishing. We'll talk about where the Albies are now and where they might go after the storm. We'll also give you some options for getting out of the swell and uh, keeping your line in the water as long as possible around the storm. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Before we begin, we've got a couple news items to send you away, and the first one comes to us from Black Hall Outfitters. This is the formal announcement of their Togtober. It's their tenth, the tenth year they've been doing it, and in, in recognition of the tenth year, they're going to donate 10% of all the proceeds to save the sound, which is a great cause. Um, this thing's going to run from the 19th, October 19th, to the 22nd. And um, they're going to have a huge party on the 22nd. It's going to start at 3 p.m. This is at their Westbrook location. And um, it's, it's a big thing, man. It's 50 bucks to enter. There's also four Calcuttas that are 20 bucks a piece with a new one for this year, False Albacore. Lots of different ways to win. The first prize winner is going to win some cash. Second prize is going to get a top-end uh, rod and reel combo. And the Calcuttas are all cash prizes as well. And, you know, as we've said in the past, Black Hall, they know how to get it done. They know how to throw a party, so it's going to be a big throwdown uh, at their place with a huge raffle. And, um, you know, definitely, definitely worth checking out. So if you want to know more about that, just head over to their website, blackhalloutfitters.com, and uh, you'll get all the information there. You can also sign up right there on the web. Next up, we're going to take a quick look at what's going on in the Dream Boat Challenge this week. No new entries this week in the Dream Boat Contest, so our top three remain unchanged. Bobby Cifarelli still holds first place with 24 points. Eddie Terrabile remains in second place with 18 points. And Kyle Krause maintains his third place position with 16 points. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman's subscriber-only multi-species fishing competition with a chance to win a new 21-foot Steigercraft center console powered by a Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. And finally, just talk about the ongoing giveaway. And uh, been a little bit of a lapse in photos this week, but uh, still getting them at a pretty steady clip. And we're going to give away a uh, Yozuri prize package. It's got some monster shots in there, which has been a hot Albi lure so far this year. It's got some leader material in there. It's got uh, a hydro twitch bait. It's got a couple other things in there, some 3D inshore stuff. So it's a, definitely a good prize. And if you don't know how this whole thing works, you just got to send your emails. I send your emails. Send your photos to me at deanderson at the .com or text them to the number on the screen. And just make sure you put contest or giveaway somewhere in the subject or wherever so that I know what it's for. And uh, this one's going to wrap up on October 26th. And I'll pick my favorite photo and that person will earn the prize. For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing. That nothing says no to fish bites. Now jumping over into the reports, uh, we're going to start up in Maine. And before we even get into the reports, pretty much any eastern facing shoreline is going to be affected by Lee, especially you know from Maine down to Nantucket. Uh, looks like the hurricane is going to come very close to making a landfall there. It's going to scrape the outer beaches is what it looks like. So um, a lot of what we're talking about this week is subject to change and I will probably mention that a few more times as we go along but uh, it's just something to keep in mind. What we've been hearing from Maine this week is that there's tons of mackerel uh, inshore right now, which is fueling a great striper bite. Uh, September so far has been very summer-like. feels like July out here. And um, that has sort of stalled the migration. It seems like the fish, uh, you know, the stripers are just kind of hanging where they are. They've got lots of food and uh, they are feeling no urgency uh, to migrate. When this storm passes, it's going to mix up the water quite a bit. Things are going to cool down quite a bit. The water's going to cool down a lot. And I do believe that that's going to jumpstart the migration. So look for that to be a change that we see next week when the water clears up. But for right now, guys are doing well from the surf, throwing needlefish, throwing plastic swing plugs, uh, chunking mackerel. That's all been working very well. The boat guys have been doing really well on live max or tro trolling the tube and worm. Those, are, uh, those have been the best ways to get fish up, up in that area. 
jumping down into the Plum Island area, I know that the Merrimack River is now nice and clean. They've been getting a lot of fish at the mouth of the river. They've been getting a lot of fish from both banks, you know, up even a mile up the river, maybe even a little bit more than that. Um, but for a little bit more on what's going on in that general area, let's toss it over now to Jim Jukes. As far as the reports are concerned, we've been uh, starting to see some small blitzes pop up in and around the rivers and where they're dumping out. Uh, there has been lots of silver sides in the area and I suspect some juvenile herring dumping out of the rivers as well. Uh, the boat guys have found some pretty good fish, uh, probably out a half a mile, quarter mile off the beach, around 20 to 30 feet of water. Um, the shore guys, we're all struggling. A few small fish over the weekend uh, I saw a couple of slot fish being taken. Uh, now they put them back, so that was a good thing, but they caught this, them. Uh, but it's been a grind. Up on the beach, it's been a grind. Now you get over into Gloucester or just up into New Hampshire, and uh, if you're on the rocks, you're still in the money. Uh, that's not to say you, you don't grind the beach like I do, but hope for to find some, but if you're really looking for that fish, get in the rocks, get going. This fall run's really gonna start to kick off real quick here. Uh, I think with this hurricane coming offshore, it's gonna blast us off the beach. And you guys that are in the rocks, make sure you're careful. Uh, but yeah, so just keep going. The fish are out there. You know, you gotta find them, work hard for them. Uh, fishery is in trouble, but that's for another time to talk about. Uh, freshwater guys are still finding some fish, you know. Talked to a couple this week, and uh, they're just doing their thing and kind of steady picking. Uh, the mass has, is just about starting their trout stocking for the fall. Uh, so if you're into some of that trout stuff, I'm sure I'll hit that soon. But keep an eye out for where they're stalking on the mass page. And uh, that's about it, Dave. Hope everybody has a, a good weekend coming up and stay safe around that hurricane that's offshore. Please, please, we don't want to hear no fatalities or nothing like that. All right, be safe, catch them up, have a great time. Now another fishery that's going to get messed up by Lee is the sharking that's out in the Gulf of Maine. It's been very, very good this week. We've seen some catch and release makos. We've seen some poor, beag peagle, uh, poor beagles. We've seen some um, threshers. We've seen lots of blues. And, um, you know, you're not going to be getting out there for a while. But that, that bite has been very good this week. And hopefully it will resume after the storm passes. Jumping down into Boston Harbor. Uh, but I've been here and there, more isolated, but still some nice stripers charging around in the bay and uh, or in the harbor, I should say. And um, you know, just smaller pods and in more isolated places, but still very good fishing to be had in that area. Something that has changed quite a bit since last week is uh, it seems like a lot of striped bass have moved in from Plymouth down to the canal and then even from the canal all the way out to Barnstable Harbor. It's mostly been a surf fisherman's game. Uh, guys are doing it mostly at night. Needlefish have been a really hot plug. Heard of some fish on some like big paddle tails, like a no live bait needed eight inch. Uh, we'll get it done. And also hearing about guys doing well on metal lips in that region. Um, and red fins too. Anything with a plastic lip is also getting it done. Uh, that area, again, uh, stands to receive quite a punishment from Lee. So we'll see how things recover after that. But uh, based on my 20-something years of experience fishing the canal, I would keep a close eye on the canal because all those fish have the possibility of being funneled down toward the canal and they may go right in there to take refuge. That's what happened after Sandy. And, I mean, that was November, and we were getting some really nice fish uh, and lots of fish and lots of bait that week. So I would keep a close eye on the canal next week. Uh, just a little tip from me. Heading out to Race Point area and then all along the outer beaches. I didn't get a lot of surf reports this week, and I have a feeling that's because a lot of the shore guys have been fishing for albies. Um, but if history is any kind of an indicator, and it usually is, there are definitely fish to be had along the outer beaches. We were hearing about some big blue fish out at Race Point prior to this week, and you know, pretty good bass fishing on Nosset and Coast Guard. So 
Um, until the waves really start to kick up, I think you got a good chance of pulling a fish out of there. And then the Monomoy area has seen Benito, has seen Albies, has seen some bluefish, and is still seeing good numbers of striped bass. So uh, that area is still putting out lots of species of fish, and again, subject to change after the storm passes, but for right now, still a very good spot to fish. Getting up into Nantucket Sound and out toward the vineyard, uh, I was looking at the vineyard derby list. You know, it only started three or four days ago. They've already got close to 70 albies weighed in. They've already got over 115 bluefish weighed in, and I think they had close to 60 bonito weighed in. So the that kind of gives you a picture of what's possible in the Nantucket Sound, Vineyard Sound area. Um, there's bluefish up to 14 pounds. There's been some really nice albies. There's been some pretty solid bonito in that area. Um, closer to shore, you know, closer to the mainland, the, what I've been hearing is that the bite's been tough. The fish have been very finicky. They're on really small bait, and uh, they've been tough to convince to bite. But um, these, these guys that are doing the derby are getting fish. They're getting fish from shore and boat. Uh, they even had a the first first triple crown of the year was uh, was weighed in by a, one of their little tinies there. I forget what exactly what they call them, but the super young little kids, and uh, I thought that was awesome to see. Um, but the Albi bite is alive. It's just, especially as you get closer to the Cape itself, it's been a little tougher. Pushing through the Elizabeth Islands seems to get a little bit better. Um, all along the eastern end of Buzzards Bay up to like Stony Point Dyke, there's been decent Albi action and lots of small to medium stripers in that area as well. Getting up toward the canal, uh, by all indications that I've heard, the canal has had a pretty good week. I haven't heard of anything really big. Um, doesn't mean that they haven't been caught, but um, it's a good mix of bait in there and a lot of it and some, and some really solid action has been happening all week. But let's get a more complete rundown of that from East End Eddie. Hi Dave, it's an overcast day here on the Cape Cod Canal. Uh, fishing has been great and it should get even better uh, after tonight. We've got a new moon coming in at uh, around 9.30 tonight. Uh, there's a ton of small bait in the canal, whiting, peanut bunker, silver sides, and the fish are keyed in on small bait. Um, there were more bluefish in the canal than stripers up until recently, but now there are more stripers. Um, but there are still a nice mix of actually both species patrolling every level of the water column. Um, so uh, Ara Yesayan caught a 35 inch uh, bluefish, uh, good size blue with a, uh, a blue uh, uh, savage who was bouncing off the bottom. And Andre uh, Pepe Chauvin, a member of the prestigious Canal Sportsman's Club, landed uh, two good sized bluefish with a yellow PK pencil and a topwater bite. Andre's a great guy, so I was happy for him. And uh, expert uh, lawmaker Joe Piva landed a 12 pound bluefish with one of his own pencils, a 3T uh, pencil. And um, his cousin Steve caught a 10 pounder right after that with the same law. Um, so I was fishing uh, with Jimmy Kelly, the pride of Brighton, and we we're having a great time, but we weren't catching any fish. And I had to leave for a doctor's appointment. So I said goodbye to Jim and went to the doctor. An hour after I left, Jimmy landed a 39 inch uh, uh, striped bass and a 41 inch. So the moral of that story is uh, forget the doctor, just keep fishing. No, I'm only kidding. I don't want calls from doctors. Um, and uh, uh, Doug Freeman caught a 39-inch on a West Tide. He was using a Happy as a Clam uh, a mini cruiser, uh, blue mackerel uh, pattern, and a topwater bite. The brakes were sporadic, but he took in a nice 39-inch. Uh, and that was actually one inch shot. If it had been, if it had been one inch more, I should say, uh, he would have been able to add to his total of 40-inch fish. Uh, he's caught, Doug has caught uh, 46 fish that are at least 40 inches, 40 plus. So that's an impressive total. If anybody can beat that, please uh, contact me at eastendeddy789 at yahoo.com. Or even if you came close, that's a lot of, a lot of uh, big fish. Um, so uh, my best story of the week is a young man named Matt Sater, who's only 14 years old. Matt has been fishing his whole life, but this is his first year in the canal. And uh, he was... Uh, bouncing a, um, a blue fish lab off the bottom, jigging on a uh, west tide around, uh, around supper time. And then the, the dinner bell went off for stripers. So he reeled in a 32 pound striped bass. And the next day he came back 
same place, same time, same law, and he caught a 36 pounder. So in consecutive days, he caught a 32 pound and a 36 pound striped bass. And he's such a nice kid. I wasn't there and I, I got his phone number from some of my guys that were there that gave it to me. And uh, and I told him, I said, I've, I've got to speak to your mother to get permission to talk to you because he's only 14 years old. So his mother's very nice. She said, sure. And uh, you know, when I'm, when I'm interviewing uh, Matt, he told me, he said, if you write anything about me, could you make sure you give credit to my mother because she drives me to the canal every time. And I thought, what a nice thing to say. You know, he's a, he's a very polite, nice young man. And uh, the future of uh, surf casting is in good hands with Matt Sater. So congratulations to you, Matt. So my, my tip of the week is that this Saturday is Canal Day from 10 to 6. Uh, there's food trucks, music, vendors. It's always a great time. And, uh, and it's uh, free admission. So... Come to Canal Day and you'll have a great, great time. So until next week, catch a big one. And then heading out west, uh, out to like the Westport area, I was talking to Jason Colby this week. Uh, his Cox's trips have still been putting out good cod. Uh, sea bass is closed in Massachusetts, so don't make that mistake. But the togging is still phenomenal. And we've been seeing some nice, like small to medium striped bass on like the Rhode Island border area as well. So. Uh, pretty good fishing in that region right now, and that's what I have for you guys in Massachusetts this week. Jumping over into Rhode Island, the offshore bite has been very good again this week. We're seeing lots of yellowfin, we're seeing lots of bluefin, uh, seeing fish from footballs all the way up to giants, and uh, it seems like it's been an exceptionally good week for offshore. We've had a lot of calm seas, which is about to change, um, but you know, if you can. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's possible. I was going to say, if you can get out there before the swell starts, uh, it might be worth a shot, but I think I think by now it's uh, it's already starting to heave out there. Uh, hopefully, you know, that fishery will weather the storm a little differently than stuff inshore. I don't think the water's going to get too dirty. It's just going to get big. So, um, you know, these guys are going to have to dial in the fish again once the seas calm down a little bit. But uh, for right now, the offshore fish has been phenomenal. Coming back closer to shore, let's check in first with TJ Kopecki. Thanks, Dave. Hey, guys. Nice to be back. Got a quick video for uh, some of the uh, East Bay area of Narragansett Bay, uh, Maho Bay, Scana River, up into the Taunton River, Lees River. A um, couple of notes I want to get to real quick first. Um, first one's in regards to the Rhode Island Todd Classic, Ralph at Crafty One Customs. Uh, I put out a video this week, uh, just requesting that if you're going to sign up and fish the tournament, you have like less than a month to do so. Um, he's just asking if you can sign up the earlier the better, just so he can have the food and the shirt that you get um, all squared away. So he knows that he wants a, just a good count uh, and wants to know how many people are actually going to fish the tournament. Um, and... Uh, while you're on the uh, website, sign up, check, take a look at all the raffles. Uh, you can actually win a free boat. Um, it looks like it was a used boat, but uh, still, hey, it's $100. You know, could get you a uh, chance to win a boat. Uh, only 500 tickets for that available. Um, second note I got is we talked to Manny at Lucky Bait. And uh, if you do plan on fishing that tournament too, he would like to uh, for you to give him a call ahead if you plan on getting... Uh, more than a gallon of crabs, just so they have the right amount of crabs for everybody. Uh, I know it's going to be a uh, very busy day in there, or a very busy morning, or like week heading up to the tournament with uh, people buying. Uh, I know I reserved my bushel already. Uh, so if you need to call Lucky Bait and Warren, you can reach them at 401 247 2223. And that's 401 247 2223. Ask for Manny and uh, he will take care of you there. Uh, so, speaking of TOG, um, the TOG bite's been picking up actually in the, the Warren River and at all, you know, all the usual haunts outside of the bay underneath the Maho Bridge. Um, got some good reports of some keeper fish being caught in some shallow water. So, uh, that's a good opportunity for you. Uh, go get some crabs now and, uh, you know, practice. You know, fishing for the tournament, looking for some good spots if you plan on fishing from shore. Um, the, the boat guys have been uh, doing just as well out on the, uh, the bridges and in a little bit of a deeper water. Um, also, lots of blues, lots of bait. My whole bay is just littered with small cocktail blues. 
I couldn't get away from the small ones. There was uh, anywhere from 12 to 16 inch bluefish everywhere from Spar Island, the mouth of the Kikamua, right across onto uh, the Tiverton side of the Sakana River, uh, up to Gold Medal Bakery and Fall River, and all the way up into Dighton, into the Taunton River. So there's lots of good spots for bluefish. Um, and they're real fun to catch. Um, basically, uh, we were just using four inch uh, top water and a couple of uh, uh, hard body swimmers, just so uh, we wouldn't get bit off. Um, soft plastics, you tend to lose a lot to get bit off. So the harder the stick bait you use, the better off you are, or just stay with top water. Um, I got a chance to get up into this kind of myself uh, on Sunday. Uh, it was real foggy out, so we didn't get too, too far up. Uh, we got about up to uh, just the very beginning of Sarchus Point near Paradise Rock. And uh, I tell you, we scored on a lot of nice sea bass from 14 feet of water um, all the way up to about 35 feet. And uh, we just kept making that same drift and same drift. Very lot of shorts. I think we picked up like two or three uh, keeper-sized sea bass. Uh, and a lot of short fluke that were mixed in. And basically, we were just... Uh, using squid on a high-low rig with a sinker, and I was just using basically a Williamson jig off the bottom, and we were plucking away lots of sea bass. Very fun. Uh, we didn't get the keepers that we wanted to, but uh, all in all, it was a good day out, out on there. Um, so, I mean, I think things are gonna get better. Let's uh, start talking about, we got a pre-storm coming, Hurricane Lee, and we got a full moon coming in the bay uh, also. Uh, I just really think it's going to spark up. Look for Albies to move in like pre-storm. And then they're probably going to like get away until probably Tuesday. You won't see them again just because of the size of the surf and all the undertow. It's washing up the bottom of the bay. So uh, look for fishing to be really good on Thursday and Friday um, inside of the bay. And then, uh, I mean... Please, I think we all ask, don't be the one to get out on the rocks out way on the surf uh, in that nine foot waves that they're actually predicting. Uh, just do the right thing and, uh, you know, keep it safe. So other than that, uh, things are going to get better. Uh, and we'll catch you next week. Tight lines. I've done a little bit of Alby fishing this week in Rhode Island. And uh, it's been, I would call it good, but up and down. Uh, some days have been very good, some days have been very tough. Um, a lot of the albies seem to be feeding on bigger bait. We've seen them feeding on squid. Um, we've seen them ignoring big schools of peanut bunker, which is kind of strange. But um, albie snacks have been crushing it for us. And um, I have heard lots of guys doing well in epoxies too though. So um, the fishery is good and we're seeing a lot of exotic species around. I saw, I've seen two mahi caught inshore this week. I mean, just little guys, little chicken mahi, but they were, you know, within a few hundred yards of the, of Newport, you know, I mean, we're talking really close to shore. So that's kind of interesting. Also, there's been banded rudderfish around and these, uh, lesser, some kind of lesser jacks. I forget exactly what they call them. Um, and, um, there's been frigate mackerel around, uh, very, just a lot of interesting stuff going on, a lot of interesting species in this warm water. Uh, we will see what happens after the storm blows through, but in my experience, um, what, you know, with the Albies in particular, when, the storm, when, when a storm comes in like this and mixes things up, some of the Albies just head out and I, sometimes I wonder if they ever come back. Other ones go inside. So in the Rhode Island area, it's pretty easy to say where they're going to go. They're going to go up into Narragansett Bay. A few years ago, they went all the way up to Providence. Uh, so it's definitely worth a look, you know, on these heavy days to go in and check around the Braga Bridge, check around Colt State Park, check all the way up to Providence or Kinemakit Point, um, or even just the north end of Jamestown, the north end of uh, Newport, uh, around the uh, around the Mount Hope Bridge. Anywhere you've got good moving current, you've got a possibility of finding some of these albies that go in instead of going offshore. And um, you know, hopefully they'll do that again, and we'll have a little you know mini contained fishery until things calm down and clean up a little bit out front. The other thing I forgot to mention is bonito fishing has been phenomenal this year in, in Rhode Island. I mean, almost as good as the albie fishing. Seeing tons and tons of bonito, which is pretty cool. Uh, for a little bit more on that and some of the other things happening in the Newport area, let's toss it over now to Coral Aiello. 
Hi Dave, Coral here from Sarah Star Charters with the Rhode Island Fishing Report. Uh, not much has changed since last week. There's still, um, you know, tons of albies being caught. I think the reports are kind of coming in more um, and, you know, the the schools of albies are getting bigger. They're not as spotty as they were. Again, you know, albies are albies and, you know, sometimes you can go out there for a day and look for them and you don't see anything. But uh, there's so much bait around that, you know, you will eventually run into them. If you are, you know, trying all day for albies, you're going to get on some eventually. They'll pop up somewhere. They're on really small baits though. So like small profile, you know, epoxies work really good. Um, tons and tons of peanut bunker out there. I believe there's also some bay anchovies. Um, I'm not exactly sure if they are bay anchovies, but they're super small baits and they're not peanut bunker, but there are, there is definitely a mix. Uh, there's actually so much bait around that I ran into a big, you know, pot of bait and there's absolutely no fish on them because there's just so much bait that like there's not enough fish to be, you know, on every single pot of bait. But it's a good thing because that means that there are probably fish close by. Um, you know, people are still catching nice stripers on eels out front. They haven't really started to move yet. They're in their, you know, regular spots. Um, the only thing that's a little concerning is the water temperatures are very warm right now. I mean, yesterday the surface temperature was almost 75 degrees off Newport. And I mean, it's September. So normally, you know, the water temperature starts to kind of go down at this point and that's actually rising. Um, just a few weeks ago, it was like 68 degrees and now we're back up to 75 in September. So that's a little concerning, especially with this hurricane coming up. Um, you know, hurricanes can often shut down, you know, the fishing and I'm just hoping that doesn't happen. Um, but the other cool thing about um, the, the warm waters right now is that we are catching some pretty cool, you know, tropical species that we don't often see in shore. Uh, for example, I had a buddy of mine catch a pretty good mahi off Sakonet the other day. I think there was like a floating log or something and they cast it at it um, and, you know, they got a mahi. So with that in mind, I was like, well, I'm just going to try the cans off Newport, you know, you never know. Um, and we actually casted some little epoxies and some squid out there and we were catching chickens right off of Newport. So that is kind of cool. But again, I wish the water temperatures would start to drop now. I'm hoping after this little heat wave that we had, the water temperatures would go back down to normal uh, to really get the tog chewing. You can, you know, still catch them now, but like they really prefer the, the cooler water temperatures. I mean, with them rising like that, it's, you know, it's gonna take a little bit longer to, to get these tog to come in really close to the shallow waters uh, where everybody likes to target them on the jig, uh, maybe some Asian crabs. Um, but other than that, everything seems to be pretty status quo, still getting a lot of sea bass, still tons of bluefish around, stripers are still biting pretty heavily. Um, you know, albies, you know, some reports of getting bonito, um, but you know, so much bait around, you know, I'm sure that, you know, this fishing isn't gonna be too affected by the hurricane, I'm hoping not anyway. Uh, we will see, and um, I look forward uh, to the fall. And again, water, uh, cooler water, temperatures dropping, and I'm ready for sweatshirt weather and to catch some big tog, which will be happening very shortly. Heading out to Block Island, let's take a quick stop in with John Lee from JL Charters. Um, we've had some bottom fish trips this week, going further and further offshore, south of Block, Cox's Ledge. Um, decent fishing, not, not great fishing. A pick of codfish, a pick of big sea bass, big scup, ling, uh, some fluke. I would say the fishing was kind of on the slower side, fishing 110 feet. I'm hoping that's going to change as the water starts to cool off a little bit. Um, we're kind of between the summer and the fall, so some of the fisheries feel a little stagnant at the moment. Um, played around with some green bonita closer to home around the lighthouse and um, did a blackfish trip yesterday and actually was surprised, got a good chew going. A lot of shorts, but you're getting fish, you're getting bigger fish along with the shorts. And we got Hurricane or Tropical Storm Lee, I'm not sure what's happening with that, and that's gonna do something to our fisheries for sure. Some will be, some will benefit, some will lessen, but it'll definitely kick off the fall. Anyway, take care. 
And then heading west, uh, seems like the fluke bite is calming down, starting to peter out a little bit, starting to you know taper off. Uh, but we are hearing good albi reports all along South County, hearing some good striper reports around the breachways and out around the Watch Hill Reefs and even heading out more toward Fishers Island. For a little bit more on that, let's toss it over now to Declan O'Donnell from Breachway Bait and Tackle. Hi, this is Declan from Breachway Bait and Tackle here with another fishing report from Southern Rhode Island. Uh, it's been an okay week. Things have kind of slowed down uh, for striper fishing, both in the pond and out front. There is a lot of bait. Uh, I think some of the, uh, the pickup in water temperatures has kind of put the bite down a bit, but that's okay. I'm thinking they're going to put a good chew on uh, tonight and tomorrow before the storm. And this storm is really going to cause some uh, migration to, to start happening. These fish are going to start getting really aggressive and start feeding heavy. Uh, looking forward to that. Uh, we've had a lot of mullet start showing up in the salt pond down here in Integrate Pond. Uh, that's been great to see. That always excites me. Uh, the fish are going to take some bigger baits, some topwater baits. Uh, it's one of the funner styles of fishing here in the salt pond, so it's very exciting. Uh, other fishing, uh, blackfish bite continues to, to produce pretty well, uh, fish up to eight pounds, uh, best bites coming in about 30 feet of water. Uh, you can catch them all the way up to 10, 15 feet of water. Still a lot of sea bass and scup around, uh, nice sized ones as well. Uh, and even a few anglers still finding a few flukes. So we're thinking this storm's going to stir things up and maybe push push some of those fish out a bit, but the water is still warm, so thinking uh, some of those bottom fish are going to hang around for a little while longer. Uh, tuna fishing remains hot as well. Uh, fish coming on the, the troll, chunk, and jig, both bluefin and yellowfin. Uh, been a very good bite. Uh, good luck fishing this week. Jumping over into Long Island Sound now, it's a momentous week because the Albies made their appearance in Long Island Sound and are really just charging into the sound. Um, it started off around Fishers Island, they got into the race, they got up around the Thames River, then they got up all the way to the Connecticut River and into Niantic Bay, and now, uh, as of yesterday, I heard some reports that they had made it all the way to Middle Ground. Um, so they've covered like... I don't know what that is, 50, 60 miles already in just a few days. Um, and that's a really good thing, especially with this hurricane coming, because the sound is a completely different animal. It's a contained uh, body of water for the most part. You're still going to get kicked up. It's still going to get big. It's still going to see a little coastal flooding here and there. It's still going to get dirty. But um, with a lot of Albies already in the sound, I think that area in particular will recover the fastest and will probably feature the best Albie fishing the soonest. So... Um, if you're kind of thinking about where you're going to go next Tuesday, next Wednesday, uh, you may want to think about shoving off into the central or western sound. I think you're going to find better fishing there if you're looking for albies. Uh, kind of heading back east now, uh, there was a lot of striped bass action around Fishers Island. Still a lot of sharks in the area though, and some big bass have been caught uh, around Fishers this week. Getting up closer to the Thames River, there were some really good striped bass caught in the mouth of the river on top water uh, over the last few days as well and some big bluefish in the mix as well. Uh, heading out more toward the Connecticut River, same story, the bass fishing is just getting better and better. And uh, for a little bit more on that, let's toss it over now to Captain Mike Roy from Real Cast Charters. Hey what's up guys, for this week's fishing report it's starting to feel a lot like fall. We've seen an increase in surface activity, there's schools of stripers, bluefish and hardtails feeding on small bait. Uh, all the reefs are loaded with small bait. There are uh, banchovies, silver sides, peanut bunker, juvenile butterfish. Uh, the bottom fishing has been really good too. Black sea bass fishing is going really well. Uh, we're using a lot of small metals, so vertical jigging, uh, Shimano current sniper jigs, and small diamond jigs has been working really well. Uh, still some good stripers around, although I would expect another push of big fish probably towards the end of September. So uh, plenty of good fall fishing ahead. It's just getting started now. Good luck. And while we're in the Connecticut River region, let's head up the river a little bit and check in with Rowan Lytle. Uh, so we're looking at sort of another uh, return to somewhat cooler temperatures. Uh, cold front coming through today as I'm recording this on Wednesday. 
Uh, that's got a lot of rain associated with it. Uh, that should mostly impact the tributaries of the Connecticut River, not the river itself as much. Uh, but I'm sure it's going to be murky for at least a few days. It might still be fairly muddy and a little bit high on the weekend. Uh, but again, looking at temperatures dropping and shad and herring, uh, young of the year, pushing out into the main stem of the river and, and back down river uh, on their way back to the ocean. And that should still have the bass pretty fired up. Uh, so hopefully there should be some good topwater bites on the main river weed edges. Those weed edges aren't as defined as they usually are because the water was so high for most of the year, uh, but they're there. Uh, look for fish on riprap too, especially the smallmouth. The smallmouth will really hold to that riprap, and, and some of the bites that might have happened on weed edges will now be more riprap focused, uh, especially in areas around Rocky Hill, Hartford, uh, Glastonbury. Uh, there's some riprap banks there that hold some bass pretty well. Um, other than that, uh, the water temperature dropping a little bit, again, should benefit pike fishing. Uh, and this time of year, I usually do a little bit of targeting big chain pickerel. They also start to get a little more active again. Uh, they're a little more spread out than they are in the spring when they're spawning, but you can usually find some, uh, in some of the coves. I fish top water for them, frog presentations, usually with a fly rod, uh, but hollow body frogs work quite well. Um, the Connecticut River has some of the largest chain pickerel there are, uh, so they're, they're a worthy target, though a lot of people may not see them that way. Uh, get out there, tight lines everyone. And then heading west from there, we'll stop in Westbrook, check in with Matt Stone from Black Hall Outfitters. Uh, a lot of fall stuff going on right now. We're kind of in pre-storm mode, waiting to see what happens with that. Um, in the central sound here, it's looking like it's going to mostly be um, some wind, um, nothing too crazy, and then some waves. Um, we're hopeful that it's like a minimal impact on the bite overall. We got Albies in. The Albies hit in a wave. They hit early. Um, they were hungry. They dissipated a little bit. We're waiting to hear them pick back up here, hopefully after the storm blows through. Um, but it's exciting stuff. We have Albies locally in the central and eastern sound. Um, always love to see those guys coming in early. Sea bass has been very good, 50 feet starting depth. Um, we've got some guys doing well on bait rigs, well on jigs, things like that. Um, some good blitzes going on, still a lot of birds. You're gonna see a lot of bait balls out there. Um, always worth checking it out. Once you get used to seeing those, you're gonna be able to tell the splashes between some bluefish, some stripers, and some albies. Um, they've all got kind of distinct splashes underneath those blitzes, so you'll be able to figure out kind of what you're looking at, hopefully. Um, small topwaters are working really well. Um, small paddle tails, small metals, like the Shimano current sniper, the Game On Exo Jig. Um, those are all working really well, too. Um, not much on the fluke front. Guys are still getting them. They're picking away at them but nothing really too insane um, a lot of different types and sizes of bluefish in the sound right now um, the smaller ones that we typically see in the fall are seeming to be more prevalent right now um, which is to be expected as we kind of push through um, the month of september here so overall a lot going on in the sound the water is still very warm which is great um, we've got a lot of really cool fish in here right now it's a really great time to be on the water um, keep safe during the storm and uh, we'll see what things shake out as on the back side of it and then heading out to like the New Haven area, um, still hearing very good reports for stripers and bluefish in the area. Seems like there's almost every size of striped bass in the area right now. Uh, you can catch anything from, you know, little yearlings all the way up to a true trophy. Um, and the bluefish, kind of the same, although they've been a little bit more on the larger side for the most part, until you get out more toward Milford where there's been some smaller fish on the beaches during the day, which has been good for the surf guys. Scup fishing has been phenomenal, uh, really that whole area is just littered with reefs and rock piles and uh, there's, there's got to be more scup there than there are in the entire, than, than there are people in the entire world. It's just, it's just the scup mayhem out there. So um, if you're looking for some porgies for the table, that would be definitely a good place to go even if you want to fish from shore. Uh, for a little bit more on what's going on in the Western Sound, let's toss it over now to Max Finch from Fisherman's World. This past week, we've seen Albies really invade the Western Sound. This should only get better. Hopefully, this offshore hurricane really starts funneling, help funnel the Albies, you know, into the Sound. We got good reports off of uh, New Haven out in the Mid Sound, Middle Ground of Port Jeff. There's been some pop-up schools around the islands. So only look for this to get better. Stuff like hoagie jigs, epoxy jigs, you know, Albie snacks, small sluggos, small rapalas, all work well. The bass fishing is starting to heat up too with all the small bait around. They're really starting to put the feed back on to, you know, prep for the migration. I would say a lot of the actions around the islands and back up in the back bays and estuaries and the tidal rivers. And there's also been a lot of that three to five pound bluefish around. 
The porgy bite still remains good on our shallow and deep water reefs. So always remember to bring clam chum, hop spot to like Kakini Reef, the Rex outside Kakini, outside middle passage, Green's Ledge 28C, 11B, and the Celtic Wreck. Black sea bass can be found still in our deeper water wrecks and our deeper water reefs. Still take stuff like jigs, diamond jigs, butterfly jigs, slow pitch, and then traditional high-low rigs with bait, you know, spro, bucktails, tip with gulp or squid. The fluke fishing, you know, this time of year gets tricky because they can be found shallow inshore in the mouths of harbors, rivers, and then still out in the deep water. Out in our deep water, we still got a lot of bay anchovies and stuff like that. That's what the albies are feeding on. And then up in tight, still bay anchovies, peanut bunker, spearing. So I would definitely bounce around, but can 26, 24, the OB buoy in the mouth of our harbor. Thanks and good luck. That's what I have for you guys in the reports this week. Stay safe during the storm. Don't do stupid things. Don't, you know, try to be a hero or try to go viral by, you know, surf fishing in 11-foot seas or trying to take your kayak out and that stuff. It's, you don't want to become part of the emergency and worse still, you know, you don't want to win a Darwin Award. So, uh, you know, be smart. Definitely go down and check out the ocean. It's awesome when it's big and powerful like that, but, you know, obey Mother Nature and keep your distance when it looks dangerous. Um, if you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman, I highly recommend you head over to our website. That's thefisherman.com. It gives you a full, free taste of a lot of the things that we cover. We cover the fishing from Delaware all the way up to Maine, and we do some travel stuff that reaches way outside the region. And we cover all angling disciplines, from freshwater to kayak, surf, offshore, inshore, paddleboard. It's all covered. Um, it's 30 bucks for a year. You're going to get 12 issues sent to your house. That's paper issues. And you're going to get 26 digital issues sent to your email box during the fishing season that's april to mid-november i mean that's 30 bucks it's the best 30 bucks you can spend in fishing if you're still not interested after checking us out though give us a like and subscribe here on youtube and hit that little bell thing down there so you get a notification every time we post something new appreciate you guys for watching and we'll see you next week